The NAACP's motto uh, is leading the fight to end racial inequality, but a group of former leaders say they have been unfairly suspended, harassed, and defamed by the civil rights organization. The group, which includes more than 20 folks from across the nation, they've got stories of unfair treatment and unexplained suspension of their leadership post and membership. Six of them join us tonight in studio. Rochelle Bilal, the former youth advisor and chair of the AXO competition from the Philadelphia branch. She says she was suspended from sending out an out-of-date sponsorship form letter to raise money for youth. Uh, Leroy uh, Candler, the pre past president of the Fresno NAACP chapter, says he was suspended for transferring funds from, N from the NAACP to his personal account. He says that never happened, and he has a letter from the bank manager proving his innocence. Joining us, uh, of course, uh, on the line is uh, Lou Walker, the president of the uh, Antelope Valley N NAACP branch, saying she was suspended after filing an internal harassment complaint. Anthony Douglas, a past board director of the NAACP in Oklahoma, says he was suspended a day before the national convention after challenging President and CEO Derek Johnson, uh, and will be joined later by Nashville's past president, Vanita Lewis, who says she was suspended uh, after challenging the direction of the Tennessee State Conference President Gloria Sweet Love. Also, Betty Williams, the past president of the Sacramento NAACP branch, says she was suspended three days before an election after filing uh, harassment charges. All right, glad to have all of y'all here. Uh, so, so first and foremost, um, NAACP obviously based there in uh, Baltimore, national office. Uh, and so the CEO, uh, you have the CEO, you have the board, they have jurisdiction obviously over the branches. And so when it comes to uh, you know, uh, both of you, what, what was the process uh, that took place uh, that led to your suspension? <laughs> First of all, Norma, thank you for having us because we do appreciate this. The process was none. There in the Constitution and bylaws in the NAACP basically states that if there's an issue with any member that you have to file, and they have specific way that you have to file what is considered an Article 10 in the Constitution and bylaws. That has to be filed with 20 members in good standing about what it is that you do. Most of these, the Article 10 was not filed. If you are a friend of Derek Johnson, which was told to me, that you can go to him or go to Gloria Sweetlove or deal with Erica Kane. You can go to them and tell them about you something that they can make up that you did or didn't do. And they will <coughs> give it to Derek Johnson. We recommend you suspend this person. He just signs it. He just signs it. No question, no nothing. In my case, if there was an error, I have aides that work for me. If there was an error, why don't you just call me and say, hey, you know you can't use a suspended member on your memo, and that would have been corrected, because it's a template. So you're saying that on, on what you sent out was a member that had been suspended, their name was on, uh, on this form, and that's why you got suspended? Yes. That's why I got suspended. As opposed to just, just correct, the, correct the form? Call me so I can correct the form. First of all, my aide don't know nothing about NAACP suspension. So she wasn't aware the person was suspended. Mm -hmm. So why not call me? 20 plus years in the NAACP, secretary to fill up, fell off your brains for more than 20 years. And let me make a correction. I was never over Axel's. I was over the Youth Council for 15 plus years. I've always raised funds to make sure the Youth Council go to the conventions, do what they need to do right. in the city. Yes. Leroy, you yes. said uh, according to, uh, that you were suspended for transferring funds from the NAACP account to your personal account. Uh, that was the allegation? Who made the allegation? Uh, Rick uh, Callender made the allegation. Who was that? Rick Callender the president of the, uh, of the California uh, uh, Conference. All right, so made the allegation, but you say you have a letter from your bank saying- I had saying a letter from the bank. The money was not transferred. He even had uh, legal regrets uh, chair to, come, uh, to get on a conference call with the bank manager, and the bank manager told him that he had the proof. She sent me a copy of the proof. I forwarded it to him. He showed the proof to Rick, and he still went and had me suspended. And he later on had their law to us, their attorney, Asante, ask me for the letter. I sent it to him and sent him to the proof, and I also sent the proof to uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Alice Hoffman to verify that this never happened. Nothing happened. I sent letters to... Uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Williams and, and uh, Derek Johnson asking for a hearing and asked to be heard, never gotten a response. I said in a written request, requesting that I be responded and that I be heard. 
Did either of you make an appeal to the board of directors? When you get the letter, it tells you you have to make it within 15 days. I made it within two days. Right. And I made it within two days. And nothing... To who? To who? To, to, it, at that point, it was Quincy Bates. You had, the letter came from Quincy Bates. Who's that? He's somebody on the, na- was worked in a national office okay. that dealt with memberships. He got the, let me, I got all this documentation because emails is stamped and time date. Got it. So send that back, requesting the hearing. Never got a hearing. Here's the kicker. Never got a hearing, and I was suspended right before I got to the national convention last year. Never got a hearing, but in August, got a letter said that they had a hearing without me. They deliberated and decided to spend my membership for six years. Six years. You hear me? Six. So you said it was a hearing. It took they had a hearing. You were, you didn't the, know about it. Let me say this: This is a national organization about civil rights, but yet you violate the civil rights of your members. I'm not a, a, a subscribing member. I'm a life fully paid member. Been there plus. In Philadelphia, there are two other ones. Forty plus years. Shirley Jordan was the treasurer of the Philadelphia branch because she questioned the newly elected president of the Philadelphia branch who wanted a $500 check, which is against the Constitution and bylaw. That president made up a lie on a letterhead, took it to the bank, committed fraud. Me, Shirley, and the secretary of the branch who questioned her and did do an Article 10 on the Philadelphia branch Mm -hmm. We are suspended. Yes, she did, because she's telling everybody that Derek, Derek Johnson is a friend and nothing's going to happen to her. And guess what? Nothing's happened to her. So, uh, Leroy, how long are you suspended? Unknown. It's never stated how long I was suspended. So you don't know? I don't know. They just sent me a letter saying you were suspended. When I write a letter to find out, no one can tell me to the district how long I was suspended. Nobody has an answer for that. Uh, Lou Walker, um, you were suspended for filing an internal harassment complaint. What type of co- harassment complaint was it? I didn't um, have an internal harassment complaint. My letter uh, said I was suspended for requesting that our branch secretary resign since he did not live in California. Um, And I was actually responding to the community calls for help, crisis calls. Um, I couldn't challenge my suspension. I didn't get responses um, when I inquired about it as well. So how long were you suspended? I've been suspended since um, August, but they didn't tell me how long my suspension um, is supposed to last. Um, uh, Betty, what about you? Um, I was also suspended. Um, I was running against the uh, now state president of uh, California, Hawaii. Um, They are also saying that uh, there was financial my understanding through media that it was financial issues. However, um, I also had harassment um, charges and complaints internally to the NAACP that they never responded to. So, hold on, sorry, 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 you said you had, you had harassment complaints that you filed or filed against you. Which one? I filed against um, the California Hawaii president. Okay. I internally filed three separate times. And you would say they harassment not, complaints. What kind of harassment? Harassment as far as putting information out there that was not correct. The example, I was also the election supervisor during the election period. And it stated he put out an email saying that I was not fit to be the chair for the election um, chair because I was running against him. And... The l- ballots had not been open. They were sealed. For, they were supposed to be private and not open until a certain date. And so I questioned, how did he know that information? National did not respond. He kept bullying me so much so I had to bring individuals to the meetings and I had to make a statement and ask them to put it in the minutes that I'm being bullied. He's accusing me of things that I did not do according to the bylaws. And I wanted discrimination um, charges, at least documented in the minutes. When those minutes came from the secretary from the election committee, it never happened. Um, I continued to move forward. Then I started getting uh, cyberbullying, and it came from a dark web. I had to hire an attorney who took the cyberbullying and sent it to the Department 
of Justice, as well as the AG, the Attorney General, because in California, that is a criminal act. And so once I continue to do that, three days before the election, I was poised to win. I would have won. But three days before the election, there was an emergency agenda item saying that I should be suspended, not just me. He, he wanted the entire Sacramento NAACP branch to be suspended. However, it was myself, six others from the Sacramento branch, two of which had wrote support letters in my defense to the national board and Derek Johnson. They were suspended the next day for supporting me. Mm. Um, a, a number of people rallied behind them and said they never should have. And then they repealed those two uh, suspensions. So they suspend, just like Rochelle was saying, someone can give them information without investigation, without due process, with, without any of that. If they had known in the beginning, especially those two, that they had to repeal the suspension, mm -hmm. they would have known all they were doing was writing letters on my behalf. And it was personal right. for them to be suspended that next day. Anthony Douglas, uh, you allege that you were suspended uh, a day before the National Convention because you criticized the president and CEO, Derek Johnson. Good evening there, Roland, and thanks for having me. And, and that is correct. I've been the president of the Oklahoma State Conference as a former member of the National Board of Directors. I received an email saying that I was suspended. I've written them over eight times certified letter requesting that they tell me why I'm suspended. And still to this day, I cannot get a reason for why I'm suspended. And I was also suspended for six years. So, um, and... Um What's interesting to me here, as, I, as, I, as I'm going through um, information here, is what is consistent with all of you uh, is due process. Now, uh, based upon the rules uh, of the organization and bylaws, does it spell out clearly um, what the process is when it comes to suspension, when it comes to appeal? Who do you appeal to? Uh, and then uh, do, do you appeal to the national office? Can, at, let's, say you, let's say they rule against you. Can you then appeal to the, to the board of directors? What's that process? First of all, the Constitution and bylaws give you specifics. Now, the president can suspend you if he think it is detrimental to the organization. Mm -hmm. But if, you, if, if your friends bring you stuff and you suspend people, why would you even get involved? No, 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 but here's my whole point. Okay, yeah, I, no, 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 I, no, 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 no. I hear what so, you're so, so, I yes. get, so you have the authority to suspend. What I'm talking about, what is the process after that? If they suspend you, in the letter it tells you you have 15 days to appeal. Okay. You appeal to that. You and, and who are you appealing to? You, National office. That's correct. In, 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 what, director membership? Um, Quincy Bates at that time worked for the national Carmen, office. Carmen Hawkins. Who is? Uh, okay, uh, so uh, what's that person's title? That, um, that you would appeal to Carmen Watkins, who's a uh, the operations person, uh, uh, vice president of op operations is where the letter comes from. And uh, Rochelle is correct. There are specific dates that you go by, 15 calendar days, and then they should be responding within 10 calendar days um, of receipt. So there's a number of deadlines that the individual has to follow as well as national. What has been happening is that individuals like myself and everyone on this panel and others have responded within the guidelines that's presented in the bylaws. However, the same deadlines have not been um, given by the national. They do not follow up. We appeal, my attorneys appeal, and we are waiting on an answer on the appeal. But they don't even tell you if you have a, a complaint against you, you're not allowed to see the complaint. You are not allowed to have an attorney to, us, to speak on your behalf. If you go out in front, like my branch was threatened, if they said anything out loud against me or against I mean, or support Boy. of me, that the entire branch would be shut down. So there's these bully tactics for, for people to be silenced. And so much like you have to ask permission for a boycott or a rally that 
I know you've already experienced, you have to ask permission. And but yet you're the NAACP, you're a civil rights organization. This is as bad. It's worse than apartheid. So, so have um, any, so have yeah, okay. So, so have any of you communicated any of this to national board members? Have any of you uh, tried to attend a national board meeting? Uh, have y'all gotten anything from any of them? Anybody? Uh, let me say this. Yes, I got the. Yes, I have. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on, go. I have the whole package of everything that happened in the Philadelphia branch, and I sent it to all the national board members. Philadelphia branch is under receivership, but it's now called administratorship, which is the same thing. You know what the, the, exact, the administrator says to me? The national board want to know why you sending them this. Because I want to let you know what's been going so, on. So, so you sent, if I, one second, to every board member. Did, every board did, member. Did any board member respond to you? None. Uh, so who else said that they reached out to the board? Who else? I, I reached out to, this is Betty Williams, I reached out uh, to the board. Matter of fact, I flew to Atlanta because I heard they had this emergency s suspension on the agenda. I, flew, I took a midnight flight, flew out there, actually had a conversation with, sorry about that, with with uh, Gloria Sweetlove says, I understand you may or may not have an issue with me and or my branch. I'm here. If you have any questions, any concerns regarding me or my branch, I'm here to answer them. She answered me by saying, no, we've, took, we've taken your issue off the agenda. I was physically there. As a matter of fact, Roland, when I finished meeting with them, I ran into you in Atlanta at the in the lobby after talking to them. Oh yeah, that's when that because y'all there was because um, that was the same time Rainbow Push uh, had their meetings there as well. Got it. I, I, I remember that. Who else yeah. said that they reached out to the board board director? Someone else did. I did. Go ahead. Um, uh, what happened? I filled everything out. I um, submitted my request for a hearing. I even recorded it. I sent it certified mail. I recorded myself at the post office, and I was not getting responses. Um, I documented my calls that I made to the national office as well, and I was just given the runaround uh, repeatedly. And this is why I joined the NAA mm -hmm. in the first place, because I was experiencing this, the same um, lack of due process as a state employee. Um, we Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Ro Ro let, let me just say this. I, I served on that board. Board members is not going to intervene or get involved, even if you reach out to them, and, because they don't even know why you suspended. You don't know why you suspended. So even if they know, they're still not going to get involved because they don't want to get a letter saying that they are suspended. So a lot of times, board members will not even ascertain or talk to you about why you got suspended. And one of the things I wanted to say also, because you asked the earlier question, what the appeal process is, but first of all, when you get your letter, it tells you got 15 days to request a hearing. It doesn't give you the, the authority or the process to have an appeal. So you have to request a hearing within 15 days. But in the meantime, of waiting for that hearing for whenever they want to schedule a hearing, then you have to continue to write as everyone else have done call, email, text, or whatever, and say, tell me, send me something in writing, why am I suspended, so I can be able to prepare for a hearing, so my lawyer can be able to prepare for a hearing, to assist me in the hearing process, and you still get nothing in writing. So I wanted to make sure that you understood that the process of the 15 days, once you receive that letter, you have to request a hearing with that 15 days. If you don't submit for a hearing, then you will be notified that you refuse to participate in a hearing. And everybody has submitted their information within them 15 days. Let me say this. Even in the Constitution and bylaw, after you submit, the National Constitution and bylaw say that they're supposed to do something within 60 and 90 days, which they don't do. They don't do that at all. In my case, after, I guess it was like 60 or 90 days, they had a hearing, which I wasn't privileged to, they deliberated and decided to spend me for six years. Wait a minute, what civil rights organization has a hearing without you decide on your faith that you're not even included on it? What are they doing? Let me just say this. The one thing the NAACP has taught us, when you fight, you win. We are fighting. 
though it's, it's, it's a lot of us, but we know that there is more people out there that have been going through this with the national office, and we want them to contact us. Can I get that information out? Yeah, go ahead. We want you that's been going through this because we know you think you're going through it alone. You're not. There's a whole group of us around the country. You, you can call us and email us. You can email us at justice, J-U-S-T-I-C-E, the number four NAACP members at gmail.com. You can also call us at 323-696-2078. They taught us this, when you fight, you win. We are fighting, we are fired up, and we are not taking anymore. I'm trying to figure out the national, or Derek Johnson gets a $460,000 plus salary. More than president. Salary, more than the president of the United States. He has a board members that approve that. I'm trying to figure out, are they a cult or are they just scared? How do you increase somebody's salary to 460 plus when all of us are volunteers that don't get paid at all? Don't get a dime. Uh, we reached out to the NAACP uh, this week several times, and uh, right before we went on the air, uh, we got this statement. Go to my uh, iPad, please. Uh, Travon Williams is the SVP for marketing and comms with the NAACP. He said, I want to make sure you receive our response. I believe our Office of General Counsel emailed, but in the interest of time, the NAACP firmly denies any allegations of defamation, harassment, or improper suspension against the individuals mentioned. Furthermore, each individual has received or is receiving due process in accordance with the NAACP bylaws. The NAACP does not comment on specific internal disciplinary actions for its members. Currently, the black community is facing tremendous challenges, including attacks on voting rights, diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, crucial upcoming elections, women's rights, and most recently threats to free speech. To effectively tackle these concerns, we must maintain the strength of both our national and local branches. Our focus remains on empowering our branches to effectively address and assist the needs of our community and to encourage to encouraging all eligible black voters to cast ballots in the 2024 election, the most important election of our lifetime. Uh, that's the statement from uh, the NAACP National Office. Um, final comment. Uh, final I'm sorry, someone will say it. Well, let, let me say that. I just reviewed that uh, statement as you have read it also. I've been a member of this NAACP since 74. I'm a retired Vietnam, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, Gulf War veteran, 100% disabled. I volunteer my time. I've served as the president and interim president for the state of Oklahoma NAACP for going on 19 to 20 years. To see that statement, to sh shuck around with that statement, to say you're not going to comment, you're not going to address these issues. The Constitution bylaws give you that authority. When you raise the question about the 2019 organization in Delaware, then they threaten to say, if you bring that up, you talk about the Delaware Corporation, we're going to suspend you. You question my authority, you're going to suspend me. As the state conference president of Oklahoma, I have never had a sit down one-on-one -on -one talk with Derek Johnson as president. You do not treat volunteers the way we have been treated. We're volunteers. We care. We're the one on the ground fighting and walking and putting our families' lives in danger behind representative members in the community. Mm -hmm. not, the, not just Derek Johnson. We're out here in the field. You don't tell me that during the George Floyd situation that the right. work that we did in the field did not help raise the money. Derek Johnson personally say it's because of him that the NAACP got the money, not what we do as leaders out in this field. So don't tell me that I don't count. This is a volunteer organization. We have should have due process. You cannot belong to a volunteer organization and be told you have no rights, you have no due process. We can degrade you, talk down to you, and treat you like we want to treat you just because you're a volunteer. Volunteers have right no matter what organization we're in. Even in the clans, they volunteers have a right. So we should have the same right in the NAACP. Lori Walker. I just wanted to share, this is exactly why we joined, because our branch was not responsive. L.A. County has some of the highest racial disparities in the country, and we have very little representation from the NAACP. I was sending Senate reports. I was sending data. 
and I was not getting any responses. And um, they actually exploited. They started hurting some of the cases. One of the stories was uh, on your show, Yayo Russell. She was one of the stories that NAACP representatives um, didn't even contact the family for, and they went on. Um, they went on the news in a press conference without the family's permission. So I want to um, stress that it's one thing to not be active and effective in the black community. It's another to hurt and harm the black community um, under the guise of being a civil rights organization. Betty? So. Betty? Um, in, in their response, there's a couple of things that they said as far as what they do. And so one of the things I would like to see them do, at least in California, there's at least five harassment charges from five different women um, that hasn't been addressed. I'm one of the five and have documentation to prove it. So one of the things I'm I would sorry, like I'm sorry, to you say five different harassment allegations, five diff different uh, women. Five different uh, women. Against whom? In, in California. In California. Against, that I, against, I personally uh, against other members? Against who? Who? Uh, against um, uh, some individuals on the executive committee, okay. the California Hawaii president. Um, and so for them to say that they are busy fighting charges when there's harassment against women, one, tr try to look in your own backyard and deal with the women that are filing those charges internally, at the very least acknowledge that it happened. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they're, they're, they're talking about they're fighting for elections, and mm -hmm. but yet internally, there's so, so many things that's going on with their own elections. They are changing the script according to the bylaws. There's individuals who name a total of 46 names were taken off of a ballot with no explanation at all. Um, Leroy himself was suspended because he was a secretary um, challenging the election process. I was challenged and things were just changed, people's names taken off of ballots. And so internally, when you appeal it, they throw them out. We appealed certain things that should not have happened um, when it came to the election, internal election process, mm -hmm. and they would throw it out and said it had nothing to do with anything. And finally, the committee that handles the suspension is called the membership committee. And personally and collectively, we feel that they should eliminate that entire committee because they are actively not doing the due diligence. They're taking on personal assignments. And if you don't do right by those individuals, they will go forward with suspensions without due process. We're saying it should be a third party entity that has a legal arm that looks into the investigation of any and all suspensions. That's what we're looking for. Uh, Leroy? Yes. Uh, I would like to say that um I, I sent my appeal to uh, Derek Johnson, Russell Williams, and, uh, and Carmen Watkins. They did have me uh, uh, speak with uh, one of their attorneys, I believe his name was Asante. And once I sent him the letter to proof that I was vindicated, that I did that the bank letter that I had proved that I did not take any funds of the bank. And when I asked him what he was going to do now that he had the proof, and he said that that depended on Mr. Callender to see what he had to say. And he was supposed to be a, a representative of the national, and he telling me to go back to the same uh, uh, president that had suspended me wrongfully because of uh, it was retaliation for what I had done as exposing the names of these people that had been taken off of this list, which is a much broader conversation than what we're having right now. Michelle? I'm going to say this and close out with this here. We know that we, there's a people around the country that are experiencing this because a lot of these chapters are in chaos. Philadelphia, you know the election is supposed to be every two years. Philadelphia is going on the fourth year of not having an election because the friend of Derek Johnson is the president. The friend that we filed charges against for fraud is still the president. I'm saying that all of those around the country, you are not by yourself. We are keeping our options open. What we are not trying to do is tear down the NAACP because it has done good works across the country. But this administration, Derek Johnson's Sweet Love, Erica Kane, a so-called lawyer, Hoffman, all of them are on the click. Anytime you, you, you wanna hang on to that $460,000 plus salary, 
when all of us out here put our money out of our pocket to continue to do the work of the NAACP, you are not alone. Call us, 323-696-2078. Email us your information, justice for NAACP members at gmail.com. When you fight, you win. We are not going to stand here and allow that click to continue to oppress members that are out here doing the work. All right. Well, look, we surely appreciate y'all being on the show. Surely keep us abreast uh, of what happens next. Hey, we keeping our options open. Trust me. All right. Thanks a bunch to all of you. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media for the creator economy. This next generation social media app with over 600,000 users is raising $17 million and now is your chance to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.